so. You're entirely bonkers. But I'll tell you a secret. All the best people are. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Chasing Latitudes with your host, myself, Christopher Cousteau. Sailing's my game, that's my name. And no, I'm not related to Jacques Cousteau, although it would have been a lot cooler if I was. Now, before we get rolling, I do want to give a huge shout out to my patrons for only $10 a month, ladies and gents. You can get full access to my members area with hundreds of other members all looking to get on the water sooner than later in the most cost effective manner possible, as well as you can come sailing with me on one of my numerous deliveries throughout the year. I've got one coming up in January from the U.S. Virgin Islands. Over to uh, Jacksonville, Florida. I got one coming up in February from the BVIs to North Carolina. Lots and lots of sailing happening. And you can come along. Just sign up to Patreon. Get over to the members area. Let's get to know each other. And let's get you on a boat sailing with me. Pretty simple, right? So we're back today. We're taking a gander at the used sailboat market. And today... We're looking at the big boy boats, ladies and gents. That's right, the 50 foot and above range. Now these are boats I can't afford, so hats off to you. If you can, Mama Warbucks out there, if you're looking for a first mate, you just let me know, cause uh, I can't afford these. And if you can, we should be friends. I'm absolutely kidding, of course, but let's pop on over to Yacht World. Take a gander at some 50 foot and above sailboats. I'm gonna show you a whole bunch of different stuff. Uh, and what's going to make the most sense for you is going to be dependent on what it is exactly what you what you want to do out there in the world. But I'm going to break down some prices, some refits, things like that, age of vessel, lifespan of things on the boats, things like that. So stay tuned and let's get rocking. We're heading on over to the wonderful world of yachts. And just like that, it's magic. Once again, we're over on the wonderful world of yachts. All I've done here. 50 foot and above in the United States, ladies and gents. That's it. That's all I'm doing. We're cruising. We're bruising. First up, 2016, as you know, 519, one fifth share. What are we not doing, ladies and gents? We're not buying timeshare boats because that's dumb. Don't do that. It's a waste of your money. It's a depreciating asset. Don't buy timeshares and boats, i.e. one fifth shares. Silly, silly, silly. 2005 custom. No, we're not buying custom boats. Why are we not buying custom boats? Because they're home built. I'm sure it's a nice boat. I'm sure it's gorgeous. But it's built in a home. It's more of an antique than an actual cruisable sailboat to cross oceans and circumnavigate the globe. Now, if you're buying 50 footers, I'm assuming that's your jam. I'm assuming that that's what you want to do. Why else would you buy a 50 footer? Maybe you got a family. You want a coastal cruise, island hop. That's cool. What are we seeing though? Like I've been saying, price drop, price drop. Boom. The market's tanking. Next up, we got a 1966. Ladies and gents, you should already know by now. Every time I say ladies and gents, take a drink, you'll be wasted by the end of this video. But we're not buying boats of this age range. Why are we not buying boats of this age range? I don't care what they cost. We're not buying boats of this age range because everything on a sailboat has a life span. Now, while this vessel may look stunning, nice and clean, somebody's obviously done a bunch of work to it. At the end of the day, you have a hull, the foundation of your entire sailboat coming up on 60 years old. No can do me amigo, nada. This 50 footer is the same as a modern 40 footer as far as your livable space goes. So makes no sense to do that. Although that is a wildly cheap price, um, but don't do that. Same thing here. We've got old cutters, 1981, 45K. A 1981 $45,000 cutter. And I'm going to point out some things here. So as we cruise, it's a cluttered mess. Somebody lives on the boat, probably, I'm guessing. And it's got a stove. Jeepers. Look at how small this is. This, oh, this is a 38. What in the world am I doing? Somebody smacked me right upside the face. That's a 38-footer yacht world. Now I'm pissed. I put in 50 foot and above, not 38, you a holio. Moving right along, 1965. Again, we're not buying boats that are coming up on over half a century old. That's just nonsense. A 1980 Kennedy Sloop, same thing. Ladies and gents, these boats are too old for you to be considering. Kennedy Sloop, look at that. Yes, yes, no. 
So a home-built backyard dumpster. Congratulations, moving right along. A Hershoff fitty. A Hershoff fitty footer. Again, we're coming up on... I mean, it's over half a century old. I don't care what you've done to the boat. It is too old for this size of a vessel to be buying that. Endurance. You've already endured past your lifespan, sir. It's time for you to let it go. Look at this. This is like a... This is a train wreck. Absolute train wreck. It's like I'm watching a car accident take place firsthand. Every time I click a picture, bam, I got another car accident. This just gets worse by the moment. The actual livable space on these old vessels, I'm going to show you here shortly, is not nearly close to 50 foot. So why would you buy a 50 foot boat if your livable space on boats 35 foot? That'd be pulling a sailing Atticus. Nobody wants to be like them. Why would you do that? Buy a 42 foot boat with 30 foot of livable space? The heck would you do that for? That's just dumb. Moving right along, up next, again, ancient days gone by. A 1977 Hershoff Caribbean 50-foot catch. Now, if we cruise right along, we're moving, we're shaking. Look at the overhang here. Insane. Insanity 101. Hey, he's got a lot of spare belts. I wonder if that's because he's always throwing them. Maybe, or maybe he's just well prepared. Look at this. This guy's a giant fan of showing his electronics though. So at some point, someone did some work to this. But again, it does not matter. And here's a perfect example. Look at that. It's like the, the stars aligned. Look at this. So here's the fiberglass, i.e. the foundation of the vessel. And look at this. It's brittle. It's old. Why is it brittle? Why is it old? And how do I know? You can tell that it's brittle and old just by literally looking at it. It's starting some seepage. It's having some issues here. This is too old of a vessel for you to be buying. What in the French toast? Like, what? No, ladies and gents, it's $60,000. That's a ton of money. And this 50 foot catch, that has the livable space of like a 40 footer on it. He did repower it at some point. Congratulations, hats off to you, sir. Lovely, got some, no, we're just, I'm done, I'm over it. And a 9.9 .9 to boot. Here we go, Hunter 54, Huntera, Hunter, if you would uh, mind. Here we go, cruising. Somebody repowered this one at some point. Oh my lanta. Look at the countertops. It looks like somebody had diarrhea on your backsplash. That's what it looks like. Where exactly did you get your design from? Was it from Elena at Sailing the Vagabond? Because she has about that good of design sense as well. If you're going for ugly, ladies and gents, you have reached the mark with this vest. Oh my gosh. Someone had diarrhea over the entire interior of this boat. It looks like somebody had diarrhea without a diaper and just crawled along the countertops here. That's what this looks like. It looks terrible. The rest of the boat looks like trash as well. And uh, the boat's from 1983. You couldn't even replace the stove. This is the problem. Some more poo-filled countertops. Lovely. <laughs> oh, man. We have a bird bath for a sink, ladies and gents. Hello. Last time I checked, we're on a sailboat sailing. The boat bobs. It weaves. It rocks. It rolls. It shakes. It bakes. Why would I want a bird bath? for a sink. Oh, that's right. I wouldn't. Why wouldn't you, Chris? Because the water's going to splash everywhere, you dingle berry. How dumb. You and Elena should get together and never design anything ever again. Oh, somebody did some work here. Look at all these winches. We got eight winches. Talk about running costs. Ladies and gents, winch, winches are expensive. And if you're keeping track of your drinks by now, I've said ladies and gents like a hundred times, darn it. But look at the amount of these winches. That's a lot of servicing winches you're going to have to do. Oh, and your fingers in the picture, sir. Just retake the picture. You know, this person's happy, though. They're like high-fiving, so I'm high-fiving them back. Hey, we got a stock photo from probably 1983 to boot. Let's take a gander. 1983 Hunter 54. Chris, but it's a 54-footer. No, George, it's not. Sailboat, data. Here we are. Hunter 54. Hunter. Dar. And look, you can see it right here. Livable space, not jamming, not big here. Doesn't take up much room. Oh, and look at this. 43 and a half feet, 54.83. We have well over a 10 foot difference. This boat and an 11 foot beam. This 54 footer 
is smaller as far as your livable space goes to an Oceanus 41, but you're going to pay a fortune in running costs because of the length overall. Hauling a 54-footer out at a marina is far more expensive than a 41-footer. Getting boat slips, far more expensive. Sails, rigging, running rigging, standing rigging. Everything on board is going to be far more expensive on a vessel like this versus your modern vessel. This is no bueno. No good, ladies and gents. No good at all. So we're cruising, we're bruising, we're shaking, we're baking, we're moving right along. Again, we're not doing custom boats. Chris, why aren't we doing custom boats? Because they were backyard built. Don't know what happened to them. Don't know how it happened to them, but we're not doing it. Moving right along. Gulf Star 50. Gulf Stars were fantastic back in their day. But back in their day, ladies and gents, that's 1980. Last time I checked, it's 2024. Hello? 44 years old. 44 years old. Look at this that cockpit. Useless. Absolutely useless. It's too small. The designs are trash on vessels of this age. Again, the Gulf Star, fantastic for its day. Look at this. Oh, don't mind us. We're just going to let the boat rot. But hey, we can show you some. Look at this. If I want to get depressed, I'm moving right aboard. It's like a dark cave. You know, if I'm going for uh, some bad mental health, I'm grabbing this one. Look at this. Original stove. Again, replace your stove. You a ho the o. Not cool. Not cool at all. 73K. Never going to happen. Not ever. Look at how dark that is. I'd literally debate about playing in traffic if I had to live on a boat that was that dark. What is that? Just have a rusty pole on my bed. Okay. Now. Let's show you another example. Gulf Star 50. Sailboat data. Here we go. Bam! Sailboat data. Ah, 39 foot length of waterline, 13 foot beam. Guess what? Get yourself a modern 39 footer. It's going to be bigger than this boat as far as your livable space. Your running costs going to be much, much lower on a newer boat. Stop doing this. Stop buying into this weird nonsense from people that don't actually have sailing experience, i.e., I'm not going to mention any names because I'm trying to be nice this year. A lot of YouTubers out there are telling you what to buy when they don't have any experience. They've never crossed an ocean. They've never even really lived on a sailboat. A lot of the sailors that you guys think are full time on YouTube, they're not actually full time sailors. They sail a couple months out of the year and they turn that into a years long video because they're only doing four videos a month. Pretty simple to do. Go sail for a season. You can turn that into a year, year and a half worth of footage. Again, not mentioning names, new year, new me, whatever. I'm trying to be nice. Cruising right along. Hudson Forts Catch, 1970. No, we're not. Bruce Roberts, backyard built, not doing it. Gulf Star 50, again, Hershaw 50. Look at, could you imagine the cost? Just follow along. Could you imagine the cost of replacing the sails on this vessel? Maybe you can, maybe you can't, but let me help you out. It's going to be about 25 grand just to replace the sails. And it's not a 50 footer. It's got the livable space of about a 30 footer. It's just going to make no sense at all. Look, black and white photo. Why is it black and white? Because it's ancient. That's why I'm surprised it's not uh, on a wax record telling me it's history. I mean, this guy didn't even take pictures of the actual boat. He just, oh, <laughs> nice one. You absolute jack-o'-lantern. Unbelievable. I can't. We're not doing this. I can't. Can't deal with it. 2000 Oceanus 50 footer. Here's the first real culprit. 90K, New Jersey. I'm going to take a wild guess. This boat's going to need a ton of work. That's my guess based off of the price. It's a 2000 Oceanus 50 or the Beneteau 50. She's sitting on the hard. How's she looking? Uh, looking pretty typical. Looking dark. Looking dreary. Uh, let's see if he tells us anything. I'm going to guess he's not. Oh, shnikes. Look at him. He didn't. Been on the hard for five years. Like I said, going to have a bunch of issues. Almost like I know what I'm doing. <sighs> I mean, this guy couldn't even go through the hassle of telling you anything. Some of these people don't do business with this person. I don't know them. I don't ever want to know them or see them. If you put this much effort, i.e. no effort, into your boat listing for your client, you should be fired on the spot. Your client, if you're watching, which I hope they are, fire your broker instantly get a different broker 
that's actually going to put some effort into the listing. Enough is enough. New year, new broker. Got it? Not buying 1978. Can't pronounce that name, Boats. Uh, go ahead, get mad at me in the comments for not being able to pronounce the name. Same thing as we cruise along. Another 154. Why aren't we buying the 154s? This is why. It's got an 11 foot discrepancy, length waterline versus the length overall, and only 11 foot beam. It's as big as a 41 footer. No can do, mi amigo. Why would you pay that much running cost? Hey, we got some more black and white photos from uh, the same broker because, you know, classic, classic, classic. Catalina 50. Oh, man. My brain hurts already. I haven't even gotten to the listing on the Catalina 50. Ah, oh, here we are. Catalina 50, 1991. That looks enormous. I'll give you credit. Hats off. We're going to have to pull up sailboat data. This looks great so far. I hate Catalinas, and this still looks good. These look dumb, but the boat itself, looking good. TV looks dumb, like the captain's chair. Doesn't look bad. This thing looks huge. It's like a dance floor in there. I'm gonna do some jumping jacks, work out, live my best life right there. It's also in Portland, Oregon. Uh, nice galley. Tuck right back in there. But we're gonna have to take a look at some further details here. So Catalina 50, let's plop on over, head on over, take a drive to sailboat data. Let's see what we're working with here. Look at that master suite. Jeepers, creepers. It's like a, I don't know. It's like a something. That's huge. That blanket's ugly as anything I've ever seen in my life. But hey, uh, nice head on the vessel. Nice separate shower. Doesn't look bad. These blankets, dude, enough. Like you get your advice from Elena again. Those look terrible. If I see copper, I'm going to cry. Like, those blankets are... Pfft. Let's go take a gander. Sailboat data. Here we go. The wizard's back. We're over on sailboat data, ladies and gents. This isn't terrible, oddly enough. It's not great, but it's not terrible. 44 length waterline, 50-42. So you're right at that 50-foot mark. So you're not going to get dinged for above 50. Tuck right into 50-foot slips. Now you're still going to get dinged because she is a 50-foot boat, but that's not bad. The beam... 1475, not terrible, pretty common for the 50 footers. Nowadays, you can get them in like the 16 foot range. So not bad, 109K, not as bad as I thought. However, it's 2024. The boat is 34 years old or so. My math's bad, so it's probably wrong. So 34 years. Now by then, the standing rigging on this boat needs to have been replaced. If it hasn't, you're gonna have to. The sails, we need newer sails. The sails, even in this photo, looking a little bit janky here. Um, so let's go down. Oh, look at this. You didn't tell me anything. I hate you. Legitimately, with a passion. Oh, look at that. With a passion, I hate passion yachts. The lack of effort here is astounding. Um, I feel sorry for your parents. If that's the kind of effort you're putting into your career, this is just all copy and paste it. The 160% Chanel is nice. Ooh, here we go. New Dodger, new covers, Bimini, full enclosure. Fantastic. Huh? Didn't tell me anything about the standing rigging or the sails. Thanks, you a holy -o. <sighs> So from the onset, the actual make and model, not terrible. These are not bad numbers here. The boat itself doesn't look horrible. Got some bad design, uh, interior design going on with it, but not looking terrible. Uh, not bad for a 50 footer as far as your livable space goes. Um, it's had some canvas work, some other things, nothing I see that's wildly impressive. So we'd have to give him a ringle jingle, 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 ringle, ringle. I hate these. First of all, uh, get yourself the little flappy doors. This whole pull out my nonsense stuff. Nonsense. My pull out game is not strong and I bet yours isn't either. So. Don't get the doors that you have to pull out. It's not good. Uh, moving right along. Yeah, I mean, nothing stands out to me as great. Nothing stands out to me as horrible either. So, I mean, I do like the layout. The way they did this salon area down here, the master's big. Not terrible. Maybe worth a jingle? Give them a ringle ringle. Call them up. See how things are doing on that boat. Not that bad. Not that bad at all. And look, I hate Catalinas, and I'm even saying good things about it. A custom Kim's yacht. No, 
custom. You lost me a custom? That's where I left. Irwin Center Cockpit. We don't buy Irwins. Irwins are not good boats. They never have been good boats. They never will be good boats. I don't care what somebody says. Look at this. Boat shaped like a penguin. Small at the front, wide in the middle, small at the back. Irwin, 52 footer. Let me show you something. Here we are. It's about to get interesting. 44 foot, 52 foot, seven foot difference in your length of the waterline versus length overall. Can't do it, ladies and gents. Too big. That's actually six. That's eight feet. My mouth is bad. I said that already. Eight foot difference. Boom. No can do. This makes no damn sense. No damn sense at all. None whatsoever. Look at the overhang. Look at all the wasted space. Negative. Moving right along. Same thing with all this nonsense. Custom schooner. Get out of here. Columbia cutter. We're not buying cutters, especially not in this size. Why, Chris? I like cutters because cutters cost more. There's more running rigging. There's more standing rigging. There's more sales. They cost more money. Not necessary. It's an outdated design. Stop it. Just quit right now. Quit while you're ahead. Okay? Just quit while you're ahead. These boats are all too old. All too old. And again, the livable space on board doesn't equal this number. Norseman 535. It's not a 53 footer. It's like a 43 footer as far as your space, your livable space on board. Same thing with the Gulf store. No, 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 no. Morgan Offshore 50. Don't like Morgans. They're generally not taken well care of. Why? Because they were cheap boats when they were built. So Morgan Offshore 50. You know, it's going to be very, very similar to this cattle, that Catalina 50 we looked at as far as livable space. Not horrible, not great, but uh, this would be a nice layout for someone with kids, but your actual livable space, not good, not good at all. Access it to your engine there, not good. These cushion covers are disgustingly ugly. Again, Elena's came and now she's designing everybody else's boat to look like trash too. That's a nice dinghy. Super, super nice dinghy. Good for you. It's basically the Catalina 50 that we just looked at. So let's go down. It's literally the Catalina 50 that we just looked at, basically. Uh, very, very similar. So, cruising, we're bruising. Maybe this guy told me something. Maybe, maybe. This is all copy. Okay, here we go. Boom. Recent bottom paint. Okay. Hull comp. Okay. New electronics. All right. New solar panel. Oh, okay. New Bimini and Dodger. All right. Hot water heater. Electrical serpent. Ooh, that's an expensive fix. Oh, lithium, baby. New windless. New tender. Wind generator, mainsail, air conditioning. Okay, not bad, not bad. But what's your standing rigging? Your standing rigging is going to ding me. So this one might not be bad. I mean, if it was me, I'd just get a newer boat. Um, because again, our foundation here, you know, 1984, going to cost more running costs, but they have done a bunch of stuff to it. This might be one of those gems where somebody has spent a whole bunch of time and money into it and they just can no longer afford it. 1200 watts of solar as well. Uh, waste tanks, yada, yada, yada. Hey, hats off to this broker. Good for you, buddy. You can actually price all this out and figure out exactly what it costs. The wiring was expensive. So someone has basically completely refitted this boat. So this boat might be one of those rare cases where I'd say, hey, it's okay to buy one this old. You bought them paid. Trinidad Black. Ooh, fancy. Uh, yeah, they've done a lot of stuff. Ooh, here we go. New mainsail. Genoa. Ba -dum -ba -ba -ba. You didn't say anything about standing rigging. Why not? Does it need to be replaced? If it does, I'm wiping 20K off my offer price if it needs to be replaced. But hey, Denson Yachting, good job, man. High fives. Cheers. Drinks on me next time. Okay, good job, man. So not terrible. Not awful. Not horrible. Not nearly as bad as I thought it was going to be. 1996 Beneteau Masthead Sloop. 50 footer. Typical Beneteau 50. Dual helm. This is what I'm going for. Okay. I'm taking this over the last one because I like the layout better. I like the dual helms. Uh, but again, look at these prices. 139K. 1996. Get a boat a lot newer. This is like shit talky. Um, so I might have some problems here. Just going to see. We're cruising. Ah, that's not looking good. Ah, that's looking worse. That's too small. Okay. Not great. Not horrible. Kind of in between so far, sir. Ah, looks like trash. Uh, like, let's just put some effort into, um, you know, 
Get the boat ready for a showing. Yeah, not looking good. Uh, what do you tell me about the boat? Probably nothing because you're an asshole. Uh, sorry for my language. Boom, you told me nothing. Great job. This is all copy and paste stuff for the most part. So it's not. It's got a Jenny on it. That's nice. New inverter. So he's done some stuff. So hey, maybe worth a ringle jingle. Call him up. Hey, bro. What's up with your 50? We flexible in price here, buddy. It's in Marathon, Florida. That scares me. Marathon, Florida is well known for trash cans of boats. Probably needs a lot of work is my assumption. But maybe worth a jingle, a ringle dingle. The site leads 51.5. This is the boat I'm buying. If I'm in this price range and I'm looking for a 50 footer, it's this one. Uh, why is it this one, Chris? Well, because I like this boat. Dual helms. Nice swim platform. Not a swim platform. Nice sugar scoop. Walk through transom. Very, very good numbers on the old sailboat data on this boat. I had a client go look at this boat. It's in great shape, but just doesn't have electrical winches. Doesn't have an in mass furler. So it's got some problems, but it's a good price. Um, the boat's in fantastic shape, according to my client that went and looked at it. He said he'd buy it if it was him, but it's a little bit too big for him and he's solo. So just a nice Cyclades 51.5. This forward cabin, you can turn into one main salon fairly easily. Um, yeah, I'm going with this more modern look. I like more modern look boats, but again, it's up to you. I've mentioned two older boats that may work. Catalina and a Morgan. Both basically the same boat, but hey. And then here's a little one a little bit newer. I'm always going to grab the newer one. Why, Chris? Because everything on a boat has a lifespan. The newer I go, the less money I got to spend initially on a boat. Let's go take a gander. Sailboat data. Take a look at the 51.5. See what she looks like. Here we are. We're back. We're jamming. 49.75 length of the waterline, 51.25 and a 16 foot beam. Round of applause, Cycles. You've done a good job. First built 2005, 96 horsepower, 116 gallons of fuel. We've got enough power. We've got enough fuel and holy shenanigans. Here we are. Look at the water tankage, 246 gallons, ladies and gents. I've got room to go. Okay, capsize screening for 2.06, comfort ratio 23.12, Cycleads is the winner by far. That boat crosses oceans all of the time, everywhere, ever. That, my friends, is going to be your best budget 50-footer on the market as of January 6, 2024 at 3.17 p.m. Caribbean time. That's what I'm doing right now. That's what date and time it is when I'm doing this. That's going to be the best one. We're not going to find a good one for a while. So we're going to keep cruising. We're going to make it a long video today. We're going to keep on going up and we're going to start to see some better boats. 2003 Beneteau 50, not for sale to U.S. residents while in U.S. waters. Seems rude, uh, but whatever. So like, what are we going to do? We're going to take it to federal waters, sign a bill of sale, and I'm coming back. What do you want to do there, sir, you weirdo? Denison Yachting, don't do me wrong. Don't do me wrong. Okay. You showed me two different layouts, Denison. Two different layouts. I don't know what we're doing here yet. Get a lot of stock photos. A lot of stock photos. Your photos are going downhill. This engine compartment does not look good. It's not looking clean. It looks like a leaky mess. Denison, Denison, you're letting me down. This is getting worse as we go, Denison. This is getting worse. I'm upset now, Denison. Now you've made me angry. Because I, Denison, we're going to have words, dude. All right. This is no ordinary 2003 Beneteau 50 actually, well, actually commissioned in 2004. She's a far design and would place, shut up. Uh, cruising right along. New Bimini, new davits were fitted, new outboard motor, lifting crane. Cool. Thanks, man. Show me some stuff. Engine battery and exhaust temperature alarm. Okay, what? Da, da, da. Got some stuff here. 300 watts of solar. Other details. Da, 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 da. Copy pasted. You little son of a hoot. Denison, you let me down on this one. Let me down on this one. Let's go take a look at sailboat data. And here we are. The Beneteau 50. 45 length of waterline. 50.75. 14.67 foot beam. Ladies and gents, the Cycleads is bigger and by a wide margin so would we go with the beneteau 50 footer 
Would we? No, we wouldn't. We'd go with the newer Cyclades. It's less money and it's bigger. Hello, hello. It's like I'm talking to myself here. Follow along. We're going with the psych leads, okay? We're not doing 93 Andrews 70s. It's stupid. Not doing a race boat. We're not doing stuff like that. Look at the size of this overhang. Come on, you guys. I need you I need you to follow along, okay? We got another Benito 50, but we've already learned by looking that psych lead's going to be better. Unless this guy's done something dramatic to the boat. So far, it doesn't look like it. Looking basic. Looking basic. These brokers really need to understand their market, or maybe they're just pandering to uninformed buyers. And, um, and, uh, you know, I don't know. This guy's now, oh my God. This guy's shown me 15 pictures of the cockpit. You idiot. All right. It's really, really dark inside. Okay. I'm getting mad at this guy's photos. Here we go. Bruce Far Design. Yeah. Blah, blah. She is LLC owned. You did that for taxes. You're not fooling anybody. Main sales, you know, and Bimini Stacker were all brand new within the last year. That's cool. Interior and cargo was completely redone. Waterproof foam in the last three years. Overhauled the engine in 2018. A water maker, it's on board? Like, does it work? I mean, the amount of effort these assholes put in is just next to zero. It pisses me off. Ugh. I wouldn't buy that boat just based on the listing. Not even kidding you. Uh, so now that we know for that kind of money, you know, we can get the psych leads for right around 120k. So now we know spending 170k for a boat that's 26 years older doesn't make any sense, right? Following along? Doesn't make any sense. Buy a boat from 1986, not when I can get one 20 years newer that's bigger. Uh, would I do that? Why? They're both capable of achieving the same thing at sea. They can both cross oceans. They can both circumnavigate. So why would I buy the one that's older? Why? Because Lady K said old boats are good. Lady K is a dingle dong and he's got no experience. Like if you're going to take advice from people or even listen to people, make sure they've actually crossed an ocean before you start taking advice from someone that hasn't crossed a bathtub, let alone an ocean, i.e. Lady K. So there's my thoughts. Got a Benito 50. No. To four. No. Too old. Again, these Benito 50s, unless one's got a bunch of specific upgrades, the Cyclade's going to make more sense. You're going to save more money. You can save that additional money. You know, we're talking $70,000 more. You can just buy the Cyclades, dump $70,000 into it. It's going to be newer and better than the 2150. Making sense? Following along here? Good. I hope so. Cruising on to page four. Now, before we continue on, I'd like to take a moment for my sponsor. Who's my sponsor? I'm my sponsor, ladies and gents. Why am I my sponsor? Well, because I'm not trying to hustle you on some green powdered drinks, some Japanese cooking knives, counseling services, VPNs, and language apps. I'm here to get you on the water, not sell you nonsense. So a quick word from myself about what I do. If you do need help getting on the water sooner than later, you can head on over to our website at chasinglatitudes.com. Now, I do offer full consulting over here. Now, there's a few different routes that you can go. Let's say that you're interested in a particular boat and you really want me to go in depth with you and take a look at it. You can get a one on one one time consult. It's on sale right now. It's only one hundred dollars. That gives you lifetime access to my private members area with hundreds of other members all looking to get on the water sooner than later. We will have a live one on one conversation. We'll discuss the boat you might be interested in. Uh, in depth, or we can go over several boats, whatever it is you need, you can grab the one time consult. Now, if you're in the process of buying and you kind of still got to narrow some things down, maybe you've had a previous survey that didn't work out, you're trying to determine like offer prices, things like that, you can grab a consulting package. And this will be three different consults. So we can go over multiple boats, we can touch back and forth, lifetime access to the members area, all of those good things. This is currently on sale, it's only $375. And then if you're starting your whole journey, you don't know where to start, you need help the entire process, you can get the 24 seven complete package. Again, lifetime access to the members area. It's currently half off. It's only a thousand dollars. And I'll walk you through every step of the way until we get you the boat that's going to work for you. Now this never expires. If you're not ready to buy a boat for a year or two, I say grab this now while it's on sale. 
that way we can do a whole bunch of foundational work over the next year or two before you're actually ready to buy we can get you out on boats we can look at some things we can really really get in depth and narrow down your search we'll come up with offer prices we'll go over the survey together reduction in our prices c trials all kinds of stuff that's where you want the 24 7 consulting package if you're really really serious about getting on the water also something that helps is my spreadsheet now you get my number one best-selling sailing book as well as my spreadsheet for only ten dollars so i published a sailing book on how to buy a used sailboat a couple years ago it's the number one best-selling sailing book out there at the time so you also get that it's only ten dollars so over my web suit site fantastic place to go um i've got a little bit of apparel up here stuff like that but again what we're really doing here is we just want to get you a boat that's going to work for you. So head on my website, grab a consulting package. Let's get you over in the members area. Let's get started. Here we are, ladies and gentlemen, we're back after a moment from our sponsor, i.e. myself. Now, page four, here we are. There's a total of 476 50 foot and above sailboats listed in the United States of America. And out of those 476 boats, there's probably 30 of them that are actually worth buying. Depending on your budget, there's probably realistically five. Depends on what your budget is. So although it may seem initially wildly overwhelming, it's not. Once we narrow down some things, your budget, your goals, your plans, things like that, we can be off like a herd of turtles in no time, ladies and gents. Now, what do we have so far? The best boat, gonna make the most sense, gonna be the Cyclades for whatever that was, $120,000 or something, right? So now we're moving on. We got a Bavaria 50 Vision. So now you're going to start paying attention. Let me go find that Cyclades first, okay? Because I need to remember what in the world the price was on that darn thing. I don't even know where it's at. I think it's on page two. I don't think it's on page three. Maybe it's on page three. Maybe I got lucky. Where is it? It's on page two? Yep. Page two. I apologize for the scrolling. Close your eyes. Don't get motion sickness, okay? I'm sorry. All right, it should be on this page. I just want to get a gander at the price again. Cyclades, Cyclades, where are you? Please don't tell me I lost it. There it is. 139K, can probably get it for 130. That's what we're going with. So now we got to pay close attention, okay? 130K, the best 50 footer currently, my humble opinion, right? 130K, 2006, fantastic. Back to page four. Remember that number, 130K. Now, this boat, similar year it's seventy thousand dollars more so you have to start taking a look now we found a really good deal on the market so far we gotta start taking a look someone's already in their head going oh my god it's already got an arch it's already got solar this one's better negative sir negative we don't know that yet we don't know how old that stuff is we don't know anything we do have an in-mast furler that's a fantastic addition so that's a bonus, okay? The Cyclades did not. This one does. So far, doing okay. It's a Bavaria 50 Vision. I'm tired of looking at this mother photos. So we're gonna go down here and see if he told me anything. Blah. Entertainment is elevated with a 43 inch TV. Excuse me, sir, those are $99 at Walmart. Uh, power outlets catering to both. I mean, hey, the broker's doing good so far. He's being a little bit of a storyteller. Got AIS. Dun dun dun. Safety's paramount on this vessel. Okay, you're being a little bit over the top, man. Little bit over the top of the storytelling. Just give me the facts in black and white. Completing this remarkable package is 2020. You had nine foot, nine foot dinghy. How's that completing anything? With a two stroke eight horse. Okay, now you lost me. US registered, US Coast Guard registered, and US flight. Okay, cool. Fantastic. Stop it, Yacht World. Fuck off. Other details. All right. So the guy told me some stuff. Fantastic. We're going to take a look at the Bavaria Fission 50 sailboat data really quick. One second. And here we are. Sailboat data. We're cruising to the Bavarias. This is where Bavaria generally fails. Right here. So we got a six foot discrepancy length waterline versus length overall. 14.73 beam. Again, ladies and gentlemen, it is smaller than the Cyclades. Cyclades has a 16 foot beam, 49.75 length of the waterline. The Cyclades is much, much larger than the Bavaria 50 Vision. 
And the Bavaria 50 Vision, remember, it's $70,000 more. So what are we going to do? We're just going to buy the Cyclades. Even if I have the 200K, which I don't, but if I did, we're going to buy the Cyclades. And I'm going to put that $70,000 into the Cyclades to set it up to meet my needs. Not this person's needs. My own needs. And trust me, anything that's done to this boat, we could do to the Cyclades for that 70K. And herein lies the problem. If your budget currently was, let's say, 150K or less and you needed a 50-footer, there's one boat that makes sense to buy. It's the Cyclades 50-footer. That's it. The other ones are older. They're nice boats, blah, blah, blah. But the Cyclades is the only one that's going to make sense. So like I said, 476 boats available. Depending on your budget, your goals, your dreams, your aspirations, in reality, there's one boat. If you're looking for a 50-footer at 150K or less, that's it. It's that simple. And it's the same no matter what size boat you're looking for and no matter what budget. There's always going to be a couple that make way more sense than any other boat out there on the market. And that's just one of those things you just you have to keep that in mind. It's not nearly as hard as you think. It's just a matter of understanding how to narrow this stuff down. So again, I got a Beneteau 50. We've already looked that up. Remember the Beneteau 50 right here. It's not nearly as big as the Cyclades and the Cyclades is newer and it's 70 grand less. I don't know the broker on the Cyclades. I probably should because she should probably pay me for advertising that stupid boat. It just happens to be the best deal. Now here's a dumb one. And by I mean dumb, I mean stupid. We got a Pearson 530, okay? There's a popular YouTuber out there who's got a Pearson. So you should have seen all the problems with the Pearson. Pearson 530, this all looks nice. It's very, very pretty. This is a fantastic boat in 1985. At this point, it looks like a cluttered, gosh darn mess. That looks absurd. We don't even need to go much further. Let's just go to sailboat data and take a look at how absurd this stupid thing is. And here we are, the Pearson 530. <sighs> 15 foot beam, 45 foot length is one line, 53 length overall, eight foot discrepancy, cycle leads, much, much bigger boat. Now somebody's gonna go, oh my gosh, Chris, but the Pearson, the, but the Pearson nothing. The Pearson's 43,000 pounds, the cycle leads is 30. The Pearson's going to take a ton of wind just to get up and going. The Pearson is decades older than the Cyclades. 170 gallons of fuel, 85 horsepower. The Cyclades, 96 horsepower. It's got more horsepower, less fuel. But again, for the price difference, add a fuel tank. I don't care. Water. Water is similar. You're fine. Go on down here. We can look up some useless numbers. 1.72 on the capsized screening formula. I've mentioned that. You guys know that doesn't mean anything. Neither does the comfort ratio. Doesn't matter. And someone's going to say, but the Pearson was built much, but no, it wasn't, dude. They're both hand laid fiberglass. The Pearson was not built to better standards than the Cyclades. The, pillar, the Pearson is not better. The reason it's not better is because of the age of the vessel. Everything on a sailboat has a lifespan. The sailboat, the Pearson, is not better, period. That's just an absolute fact. This guy's gonna tell you it's a rare, blah. Generator, fantastic. This boat's 200K, 70K more than the Cyclades. That's fine. You can do a ton of stuff to the Cyclades to get it up to whatever they did to this boat as far as their upgrades. It's just that simple. Um, yeah, we got a generator. Okay, all right. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Makes no damn sense, ladies and gents. This boat, <laughs> this makes no sense to buy this boat. Why would you buy this boat over the Cyclades? It would make no sense. This, look, I mean, this is pretty, but it's really, really small. Okay? It's tiny. And if we get up to, look at the cluttered deck. You got no space to move around. You got no space to do nothing on this boat. Nothing at all. You can't see through this. This is a jam-packed mess. This fuck train wreck is what that is ladies and gents and this is just black and white factual information it's not even my opinion these are just facts 
Okay, thanks for showing me that. For the 7,000th time, sometime next year, we'll get to something that resembles anything that matters. It's a single helm vessel. Look at the size of this cockpit. Tiny. Tiny, tiny, tiny. Where are you going to spend most of your time? Cockpit. Why do you want a big cockpit? Because you're going to spend most of your time there, ladies and gents. This is pretty. Don't get me wrong. Nostalgic. Majestic. All those good things. I don't know how tall of a person this was meant for, but definitely not somebody my height. So it makes no sense to buy this boat at all. You're just going to wind up with the same problems that a popular YouTuber has on a Pearson because they're all the same. Uh, yeah, this, uh, you know, I mean, it's cool. Don't get me wrong. It just makes no sense not to spend 70 K more for this boat. It just makes no sense. Please tell me you're following along. I hope you're following along because my brain hurts. We got another Pearson. This one's 205 in Brunswick, Georgia. Guess what, ladies and gents? It doesn't make any sense. It's not going to make any sense. Just like the last Pearson didn't make any sense. Why? Because the age of the vessel. Just that simple. Both boats can accomplish the same thing. Both boats can take you all around the world with the exact same amount of safety. Period. Don't care what anybody says. That's just a fact. This boat's a cluttered damn mess. You've eliminated 90% of space on board because of the design. It's a cluttered train wreck sh show. That's what this boat is. Um, my brain's hurting. The longer I look at this, the more my brain hurts. I can't take it. Oh my gosh, my brain hurts. Uh, yeah, I, I just, you know, it's not going to make any sense. Come on, guys. Follow right along. Now, right now at home, someone is feverishly hammering their keyboard trying to tell me what an idiot I am. And they're like, Chris, you're so stupid that Pearson has a skeg hung rudder. Let's go through some physics really quick, ladies and gentlemen, because I care about your well-being on the water. Notice the picture on screen. Now, if you look to the right of the picture, you can see the modified full keel. Behind that, you can see a skeg hung rudder. What do you notice here, ladies and gents? The modified full keel sits down lower than the skeg hung rudder. So it's going to take close to an act of God for something to somehow miss that keel, tuck up under the hull of the vessel, and snag that skeg hung rudder. So this weird concept that, oh my gosh, you got a skeg hung rudder with a modified full keel, it's really, really stupid. First of all, if you hit the ground on a modified full keel, you're going to punch a hole in the bottom of your vessel. It just happened to another popular sailing channel, and it happens often with people that are not paying attention on their sailboats. Now, here's another photo. And once again, you're going to notice the keel sits lower than the skig hung rudder. Now, if you pay really close attention to this image and you look at the rear of the vessel, if that skig gets hit, it's going to break. It's just that simple. And a problem that can occur with skeg hung rudders is that when you hit that skeg hard, it will punch a hole in the bottom of your hull. Now, if we compare the skeg hung rudder to our traditional spade rudder, if you hit this rudder, again, the keel sits lower, gonna take an act of God for something to come up and hit that. But let's say that it does hit that. What's gonna happen? Well, it's fairly simple. It's just going to break away. You're going to pull out your emergency tiller and you're going to get to shore. You're going to go ahead and order yourself a new rudder and be on your way. It's going to cost you about four grand. You're going to be moving, cruising, shaking, and baking. Now, with the skeg hung rudder, that's not going to be the case. If you hit that hard, again, it's going to punch a hole in the bottom of your vessel. You're going to take on water and you're going to have an extremely large repair on your hands. So clearly, we have now, if I'm in the market for a 50 footer, the United States of America, my budget is $200,000 or less. There is one boat to rule them all. It's going to be that Cyclades. There's a couple others that are worth looking at, but out of the 472 50 foot and above boats, if that's your budget, that's your price range, that's what you're looking for. There's a total of three that might make sense and one that really, really stands out above the rest. Now, how do I know this? You might be asking yourself, Chris, how do you know all this about boats? Well, let me explain. 
I think I should explain to you exactly what it is that I do. Now, I am a delivery captain. That is what I do full time, and it is how I make a living. So what that means is that on any given month throughout the year, I will sail somewhere in the neighborhood around 2,000 to 4,000 nautical miles, depending on my deliveries for that particular month. Now, this gives me a unique opportunity to do a lot of things. Number one, I get a ton of actual sailing miles under my belt every single month, and my nautical miles travel just keeps growing because, again, it's what I do for a living. This also allows me to get on a wide variety of sailboats, more than just about anyone else, because, again, everyone is buying a different vessel. They need to sail them in different conditions from different parts of the world back to their home port. So this gives me, again, another unique perspective of actually being able to spend a couple of weeks on a wide variety of sailboats throughout the year, giving me a pretty good idea of a huge variety of boats, how they're going to handle, how they are laid out, how user friendly they will be for new sales versus experienced sailors and so on. So it gives me a really, really good inside look at a lot of these vessels, which is how I can make so many videos talking about hundreds of different vessels. I've actually sailed them thousands of miles on these deliveries, and I can share that information with you 100% free here on YouTube. Now, in addition to being a full time delivery captain, I am also a sailboat purchasing consultant. So what in the world does that mean? Well, when it comes to buying yourself a new to you fancy dancy used sailboat, there are a million pitfalls hurdles involved in the buying process. My goal as a sailboat buying consultant is to help you avoid them all and walk you through every step of buying a used sailboat from start to finish. Whether you are a complete novice on a sailboat and have never stepped foot on a sailboat or you're an experienced sailor out there, but you're buying a boat and you're not 100% sure what to get. So as a sailboat buying consultant, I walk you through every single step of the process all the way from the very beginning of knowing absolutely nothing about sailboats. So we will determine together over time what sailboat is going to work the best for you and your needs, not my needs and not the sailboats that I like, but getting you the right vessel that is going to work for you. Then from there, we will go on to figure out the correct offer price based on the current market conditions for that vessel. We're going to go ahead, determine offers. We're going to set up surveys. We're going to get the survey back. We're going to readjust our offer. We're going to get your insurance handled, set up your delivery, get your first year of sailing planned out for you. So it's really nice, comfortable and easy and make things a seamless transition from living on land to living on a sailboat. Now, a lot of people have no idea what is actually involved in a sailboat, and it is nothing like buying a used car. You don't get to run around and test out different sailboats and go and sail them in the ocean. You can't do that on sailboats for the most part. There are some exceptions to that, but for the most part, you don't get to test drive these things. So we've got to get the correct surveyor, make sure we go in depth on the survey, get our offer adjusted based on what comes back on the survey. We then have to go, we have to get you insurance, get you set up with marinas, plan your routes out for your first year. And there's just a whole bunch of stuff involved in buying a used sailboat. Now, this is why I generally like to work with people as long as possible. So if I work with you for a year or more before we actually buy a sailboat for you, that's fantastic. We can really make sure that we have things dialed in properly so that you don't wind up buying the wrong boat and then just traveling around the world, fixing your boat in tropical locations only to sell it just a couple of years later. That is no fun for anyone involved. And I hate seeing people give up on sailing because they purchased the wrong sailboat. Now, we can see this play out all over YouTube all of the time. People buy the wrong boat, then they become a little bit successful, get themselves a totally different boat. But the whole time they were on that wrong boat, they were telling you how great that wrong boat was until they actually had some money and then they just went and bought a catamaran because that happens a lot. 
And I'm super happy for those guys, pumped for them. But my goal is avoiding that whole first five year scenario of you buying the wrong sailboat. So being a sailboat buying consulting also gives me another unique insight into the world of purchasing a used sailboat. Now, over the last few years, I have helped somewhere around a hundred different people buy their sailboat, whether it was their first sailboat or their 10th sailboat. So again, this has given me a very unique inside perspective into the actual used sailboat market over the last several years. And I've been involved in the purchase of so many sailboats from start to finish as a sailboat buying consultant that I've got a really, really unique perspective on it. And because I also have a YouTube presence, this gives me a huge audience. So I have a much larger audience than your typical broker. And I'll be involved in more boat deals throughout the year than most brokers out there because I have a huge audience on YouTube and I'm helping hundreds of people buy sailboats, just around a hundred or something in the last few years. So not hundreds, but you know what I mean. And that's an absolute ton of sailboat purchases to be involved in. So my videos are based off of what I'm actually doing for a living. This is what I'm seeing day to day, week to week, and month to month firsthand in the world of sailing. So this isn't some half cocked, I need YouTube views marketing gimmick. I get no benefit from you saving money and buying yourself a boat for less money. That in no way benefits me at all financially. I don't make money off of you buying a sailboat for more money or less money. My goal is always just to save you as much money as possible. My goal is not to get you to spend more money. So if you watch my videos and pay attention and take some of my advice and you can save some money, that's fantastic. That costs me nothing to do other than time making these YouTube videos to help you. But I get no financial benefit in a random YouTuber watching, saving his money and getting the right boat for less money. This isn't some little gimmick. I'm not asking you for anything. I'm simply sharing with you what I'm seeing every single day of my life based off of what I do for a living. Now, I don't do YouTube for a living. I make these videos simply to help other people get on the water. I don't do it for a living. People often go, oh, look, you have less subscribers. Of course I have less subscribers. My audience is a very specific audience and it's people looking to buy a used sailboat. I'm not a sailing vlogger. I don't travel around on a boat pointing the camera at myself and showing you white sand beaches and uh, making things dramatic that are not dramatic. I'm a delivery captain and a sailboat buying consultant that happens to make YouTube videos. If you want to watch my videos and take some tips and you can save yourself money, then that helps me just feel better as a human being, knowing that I'm helping other people in one way or another get out there on the water. Now, with being a delivery captain, this also gives me a huge opportunity to invite other people to come sailing with me all over the world on these deliveries. On any given month, I've got one or two deliveries somewhere in the world sailing 2,000 miles or more, generally speaking. Most of my trips are a week or two long. The average is about two weeks and about 2,500 nautical miles. That's kind of my average every month for uh, doing my deliveries. Sometimes it's more, sometimes it's a little bit less. But because I have that opportunity, I'm also able to offer my members the ability to come and sail with me. And it costs them nothing except their travel and their food. That's it. So how do you come sailing with me? Now, a lot of people ask me that question as well, and it's really, really simple. All you have to do is go over to my website, chasinglatitudes.com, sign up for consulting. Now, the consulting members, they always get first crack at these deliveries, and the deliveries generally fill up fast, but because everybody has their own lives and stuff, there's almost always room on all of my deliveries to get someone on the boat and come sail with me. Now, if you compare that cost to something else in the world of sailing, the only way for the average individual to get on a sailboat is usually to run out and charter a sailboat somewhere in a tropical location. That's going to generally run you about $5,000. If you're not experienced, the charter company is going to make you hire a captain for that week that you're on the boat. And now you're going to beat about $7,000 for a week of sailing on a sailboat and trying to learn how to sail. You can do that right through me for a thousand bucks. 
super, super simple because I'm not in it for the money. I'm just trying to get you guys on the water. So if you're ever interested in coming sailing with me, that's how you do it. You sign up for consulting. I get you over on the members area. We start chatting and you come sailing with me on a delivery. I have numerous people on my members area that have no desire to ever buy a sailboat. They just want to come sailing with me a couple times a year, three or four times a year, whatever works in their schedule. And once you're a consulting member, you have the opportunity to do that. So again, my entire goal with my whole YouTube channel, it's just to get people on the water. Now, because I'm a delivery captain and because I can take so many people sailing, I have a huge insight into the world of the used sailboat market. Also being a sailboat buying consultant, I am part of hundreds of deals on any given year. It's generally right around 100 boat deals a year that I'm a part of. So I'm dealing with numerous different vessels in numerous different locations, hundreds of different brokers um, and things like that. So I have a, a giant, giant insight into the world of sailing, how to get on the water, how to learn how to sail, how to buy a boat and how to do all of those things in the most cost effective way possible. So I want to say thank you all so much for coming. Now, don't forget to leave a like, darn it, comment down below, subscribe, turn on those notifications, grab yourself a consulting package, sign up for Patreon, hit the members area, all of those wonderful things. And I'll catch you guys on the next video.